These are some of the best side dishes that we have ever had. And I have to say, I've had a lot over the years, but these are sure to impress everyone at the dinner table. Hey y'all, I'm Valerie, and welcome to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm showing six of the best side dish recipes that'll be perfect for the holidays. Okay y'all, let's get started. This zucchini, squash, and corn casserole is a winner every time. To begin, in a large skillet, I added two tablespoons of butter along with one large diced onion. Now we're going to add in one and a half pounds of thinly sliced zucchini and one and a half pounds of thinly sliced yellow squash. Now this is a pan full of veggies right here. And this is a little hard to stir at first, but after they cook for a bit, it gets a little easier. And you're just going to saute these for about 5 or 10 minutes, just until they're tender. These are about done, and the recipe didn't say to drain this, but there was a whole lot of liquid in there. So I removed them from the heat, and before I took them over to the counter, I poured them into a strainer and drained them very, very well. Now, over in a large bowl, I added those drained veggies. I just love squash. I love it all. I love zucchini, acorn squash, butternut squash. You'll have to let me know below what is your favorite. Oh, and I also added one teaspoon of minced garlic and three cups of frozen corn. And I did let that sit out for just a little bit, just to thaw out. Now you're going to add in one and a half cups of white shredded cheddar cheese, along with half a cup of sour cream and half a cup of mayonnaise. Well, I was supposed to add in one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of pepper here, but I forgot, you'll see at the end. So just go ahead and make sure you salt and pepper this. And that was one cup of crushed Ritz crackers I added in there, along with two beaten eggs and a handful of shredded Parmesan cheese. Now you're just going to do your best to stir this until it's very well combined. And I had to switch to my big metal spoon here because this little rubber one just wasn't doing the trick. By the way, if you're new, I always have the recipes either linked or typed out in the description box below. Okay, I've got this all mixed together and I'm ready to pour it into the casserole dish. I'm using a 9 by 13 and I probably should have sprayed it with some nonstick spray, but I didn't. Now you can go ahead and pour in that mixture. Just get it in there and get it all spread out. And of course, we have to make up a topping for this. In a small bowl, I have about two tablespoons of melted butter and about a cup full of crushed Ritz crackers and about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. Just give it a good stir to make sure everything is coated in that butter, and then you're gonna pour it on top of that casserole. And feel free to just sprinkle this on, but I find it a lot easier to just dump it on and then spread it all out. So you just do whatever works for you, long as you get it on there. Okay, and now you're about to see what I was talking about earlier when I said don't forget to salt and pepper this because I was about to put this in the oven and I remembered that I have forgotten to add the salt and pepper. So back to the counter I went and I just sprinkled over about one teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Oh well, better late than never. I'm telling you, it was just one of those days. And I just added it to the top and tried to stir it in a little bit. It is what it is. And it turned out just fine. Now this is going into the oven to bake at 350, uncovered for about 45 minutes. And y'all, this casserole is delicious. I'll be making it for Thanksgiving and Christmas and probably Easter too because it is that good. 
Oh, and also you could make this casserole the day before and just assemble the casserole and do everything except the topping and just cover it tightly and place it in the refrigerator until you're ready to bake it. And right before you're ready to put it in the oven, just mix up that topping, sprinkle it over the top, bake it, and you are good to go. We all really love this one and I think you will too. This mushroom rice casserole may not sound like much, but it was out of this world good. You'll need an 8 by 8 inch baking dish, or you can use a 9 by 9 if that's what you have on hand. I added one cup of uncooked long grain white rice, along with one can of beef consomme, and a can of French onion soup. Oh, and about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And I had some spinach on hand that I needed to use up, so I went ahead and added a couple handfuls here. But I am so glad I did. I also threw in a little minced garlic. And of course we have to add in some mushrooms, so I added in about eight ounces of thinly sliced mushrooms. These were just the little white button mushrooms. Now you're going to give it all a really good stir. And I did try to press down on everything just to make sure it was down in that liquid. And before it goes into the oven, I'm topping it with about four tablespoons of butter. I just sliced it up and placed it evenly on top of everything. Now it's very important that you cover it very tightly here. That way that rice can cook and it goes into the oven to bake at 425 for about 40 minutes. And after 40 minutes, you're gonna remove it from the oven and remove that foil. Be careful when you're taking that foil off cause that steam will get you. You're gonna sprinkle it with about three tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. You can also do shredded, but the recipe called for grated so that's what I did. And I just eyeballed that so you can add however much you like here. And obviously I added a little more than three tablespoons cause I just kept sprinkling. <laughs> now this is going back into the oven to continue to bake uncovered for about 15 more minutes. And when it's done, you're just gonna give it a good stir, kind of fluff it up a little bit. And that is all there is to it. It is ready to serve. I had seen this recipe on TikTok and once I tried it, I've been making it ever since. So don't sleep on it. You have got to give it a try. It is outstanding and it would be perfect for any holiday. And this is a kind of side dish that is so easy. You could make it to go along with dinner for any night of the week, really. But I'll definitely be making it for the holidays. This smothered broccoli gets gone every single time. I started out by cooking up a half a pound of bacon. I just cut that into really small pieces and I let it cook until it was done, but not crispy. Cause it'll continue to cook in the oven. And when it's done, you can remove it from the heat, let it drain on a paper towel and you can cut it into smaller pieces if you need to. Now over to the counter, I'm gonna make up a sauce to pour over the broccoli. In a measuring cup, I have four tablespoons of melted butter. To that, I added one third cup of brown sugar and one fourth cup of low sodium soy sauce. Also two teaspoons of garlic powder. Now you're gonna stir that until it's well combined. And you'll have to let me know, do you have something for your holiday dinners this may be a little different and maybe not traditional. I love to hear what y'all have too. So this is a smaller casserole dish and I really wanted to use it because my mama gave it to me. I think it's an 11 by seven. That broccoli fit in there, but there was no way I was gonna be able to stir it. So I had to find something else and I could have mixed it together in a bowl now that I'm thinking about it and then added it to the casserole dish, but. 
Oh well, I ended up transferring it all to my big casserole dish. It's a 9 by 13 And I love this one too because my husband bought it for me. So it ended up just working out perfect for this recipe. And that's three small heads of broccoli. I cut the stems off and cut those florets into small bite-sized pieces. And I know it looks like a lot, but it does cook down quite a bit. And after I got all that broccoli situated in there, I sprinkled over that cooked and chopped bacon. And that was a half a pound of bacon. But if you love bacon, feel free to go ahead and add in the whole pound. Next, I'm drizzling over that sauce that we made up just a little bit ago. And now you're just going to kind of toss it around until it's all mixed together. And it doesn't have to be perfect because I'll take it out of the oven about halfway through and give it another really good mix. And it's a lot easier to stir after it's cooked down for a little bit. I baked this at 350 for a total of 40 minutes. Make sure you stir it halfway through though. This broccoli is so good though. This is actually one of my husband's absolute favorite side dishes. This recipe in particular right here. We love broccoli though, and we really love it any way you want to make it though. It's actually one of our favorite veggies to serve alongside our weeknight dinners. You'll have to let me know what your favorite veggie is. And by the way, you can reduce the sugar in this recipe a little bit, and it'll still be delicious. I think your family will love this million dollar mashed potato casserole. To begin, you'll need eight ounces of softened cream cheese. And I just added that to a very large bowl, along with one fourth cup of sour cream and one cup of cottage cheese. And I always try to look for the small curd kind. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I feel like it kind of melts down in the casserole a little bit better. And for the seasonings, I did half a teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, and two teaspoons of dried parsley. And next, you're gonna add in one cup of shredded cheddar cheese. You'll need one and a half cups of that total, but we're gonna save a half cup for the topping. Now you're gonna mix all that together. Okay, now for the potatoes. The recipe called for two of the 24 ounce packages of pre-cooked mashed potatoes, something like the Bob Evans kind. You can do that, or you could even use leftover mashed potatoes. But I made mashed potatoes one night and I just made a lot of extra. So whatever you decide to use, I would do about five cups total. And mine did already have salt and pepper, a little butter, and a little milk in there. I added those half at a time and then mixed it real good in between there. It's just easier to mix versus dumping all those potatoes in and trying to stir it all up. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up. That just lets me know that you want to see more videos like this. The recipe didn't call for this, but I decided to throw a little pepper in there. So y'all can really just add whatever you like, just season to taste. And go ahead and get you a sample. <laughs> That'll help you to know if you need to add something extra. After you get that all stirred together and get you a good arm workout, you're gonna grab a nine by 13 baking dish. And you do wanna spray it with some nonstick spray. Now just add those potatoes right on in there. Now you're gonna spread that out as best as you can and it does not have to be perfect. And if you thought this was it, nope, we're adding a topping just because every casserole has to have a topping. I'm just using that same bowl I mixed the potatoes in. The recipe called for half a cup of breadcrumbs. I was out, so I just used some Ritz crackers. And yes, I made a complete mess there. And I ended up using just a half a sleeve. I also added three tablespoons of melted butter. Then give that a quick little mix. Then we're gonna add in that reserved half a cup of shredded cheese. 
and I had someone to ask about cheddar cheese, whether to use like mild, medium, or sharp. And the best way that I can figure out to explain it is it's kind of like hot sauce or salsa. You know how everybody has their own preference, mild versus spicy or hot. The sharp cheddar is just a stronger, a little more tangier flavor. So anytime I say cheddar cheese, uh, you can use whatever you prefer. Now I'm adding on that topping and just spread it out and cover the whole top of that casserole. I thought it needed a little something extra extra here, so I sprinkled over some dried chives. And it makes it look a little prettier too. Now this casserole goes into the oven to bake at 350 for 50 to 60 minutes, uncovered. This turned out amazing. On this night, we had actually walked up to my daddy's house to eat for my nephew's birthday. So I took this with me and everyone had a fit over it. It was so good. And I'll definitely be making it for Thanksgiving. I feel like every holiday dinner, you just have to have a potato option. And this one was absolutely delicious. I'm just telling you, you gotta try this one. This honey butter skillet corn was another big hit. I doubled the recipe, just in case you look at the recipe linked in my description box. In a large skillet, I added in four tablespoons of butter. I let that melt down. Then I added in four tablespoons of honey. And I just kinda eyeballed that honey. You're just gonna whisk that and mix it all together then I added in two pounds of frozen corn. And the recipe specifically said not to let it thaw out, so you want it to still be a little frozen here. And by the way, I have my heat set to medium high. You're just gonna stir that around and let it cook. I let mine cook for about seven or eight minutes. You're kinda like sauteing that corn and kinda heating it through. Now I'm adding three-fourths teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper. I'm adding in four ounces of cream cheese. You can use the regular, but I had this whipped on hand, so I figured I'd use that. I figured it would melt down a little better. Now you're just gonna stir that around and let it continue to cook. You can turn your heat down a little bit, but I just let it cook until that cream cheese was mixed in and melted really good. And if you feel like you need to, based on the consistency, you can always add in a couple splashes of milk. I was reading the reviews on this before I made it, and someone had mentioned that it tasted like buttermilk biscuits with honey, and it really does. It turned out so good. And I do like to kind of try to change things up and kind of bring y'all some new, different ideas. And hey, it helps me to find new family favorites. If you love deviled eggs, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love this deviled egg pasta salad. We're gonna start out by making the dressing. You'll need six boiled eggs, but for now, in this medium-sized bowl, we're only adding in the six egg yolks. And you're just gonna use a fork to mash them up into really fine crumbles. The recipe said to push them through a fine mesh strainer, but I didn't have time for all that. And for the seasonings, I did half a teaspoon of salt, about a fourth of a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. Now I'm adding in two tablespoons of finely chopped red onion. Also two tablespoons of chopped green onions. I had to make sure I got them all there. Next, I'm adding about one and a half tablespoons of Dijon mustard. If you don't have Dijon, you can also just use the regular yellow mustard and three-fourths cup of mayonnaise. And the recipe called for a teaspoon of vinegar, but I thought pickle juice would be really good in here, so I just used that instead. Then I mixed it until it was well combined. Now I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator and let it be chilling while I make the pasta. I cooked up eight ounces of this Ditalini pasta according to the directions on the back of the box. Then I drained it, 
rinse it with cool water, and then drained it again. When I was done with that pasta, I grabbed that dressing out of the refrigerator, and then I added that pasta right on in. And I thought this tiny little pasta was perfect in here. I highly recommend. It did want to stick to that strainer though. Now I'm adding in those six chopped egg whites. Now all that's left to do is stir this together until that pasta is completely covered in that dressing. Now you can serve this immediately or you can cover it and chill it until you're ready to serve. I sprinkled it with a little paprika and added on some green onions. This was so, so good, and I really hope you give it a try. I mean, deviled eggs are a staple here in the South. I can't believe it's taken me this long to try deviled eggs in pasta salad. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You may also like these. Don't forget to subscribe down below for more easy recipes, and I will see you in the next one.